Hello, my name is Ann McFetridge, and I have the tremendous pleasure of sitting down with our student ambassadors this year. And today I am talking with Haley Falling, and I'm so excited. This uh, is my favorite part of doing my job, quite candidly, so is getting out, talking to customers, meeting new people, and uh, I know we have a tremendous student ambassador crew this year, and with a pandemic and so forth, being able uh, to get to know one another is, is just hard, so here's the perfect opportunity for me to do that. So thank you for taking the time out. It's a really busy conference, so I'm grateful uh, yes. that you're spending some time with me today. Yes, thank you. I'm so excited to be here with excellent, you. Excellent, excellent. So what are you thinking about the conference so far? Oh, I love it. Yes? It's been so awesome getting to talk with the different vendors and hearing from experts in the field, especially as a student. It's just really impactful. And I've had a great time listening to different perspectives and new techniques that are coming out. It's just been awesome. Awesome. So have you had a chance to sit down with John Butler? Have you talked with him yet? No. Yeah. My classmates who are here, mm -hmm. they got to meet him yesterday, but oh, I missed out, so I'm oh, hoping to find him it. today. <laughs> yeah, he is such a great guy. He really is, uh, and he'll love talking with you. There's no question. He really enjoys that. He, he loves seeing uh, young scientists uh, who are up and comers, and uh, I think you know he just wants to share his knowledge. That's the one thing I love about this field is how collaborative it is, right? So yeah. I'm glad that your experience so far the conference has been reflective of that. Yeah, certainly. And I'm thankful that it is collaborative. Yes, absolutely. So tell me about your work. I have not had an opportunity, because I've been working booth duty, hence the <laughs> outfit today, uh, to come by and see the student ambassador posters. So tell me what your research is on. Certainly. So what I'm presenting on is mitochondrial uh, DNA. We did next generation sequencing of mitochondrial DNA on some historic human skeletal remains. Wow. Um, that were discovered in Maryland mm -hmm. and it's just been the coolest project to work on. My mentors are just phenomenal and really I think the most interesting part of that is you know we're doing DNA analysis, we're doing all of this lab work but at the end of the day you're trying to still trying to tell the story mm -hmm. of the individual so getting to determine the haplogroup of that person mm -hmm. it's just awesome to see you know mm -hmm. where that ancestry lies and just tell a little bit of their story. Yeah, I love that. I love that uh, frame set that you've put around that, right? Because um, each uh, victim of crime, they have a story, right? Certainly. And so um, even though your situation is very different, there is a story to be told and people will want to hear it. So that's terrific. Um, you know, you could have chosen probably any scientific field to go into, right? But why did you choose forensic sciences? That's a great question. Um, I think probably it just seemed very interesting when I went into undergrad of all of the majors that were listed, forensic science seemed the most interesting, but I think I've kept with it because um, I believe that every individual has an innate dignity. Mm -hmm. And you know, when an attempt is made on that person's life, um, it's a way to try to eliminate that dignity. And I think that forensic science is a tool to make sure that we can identify a victim or identify a perpetrator and make sure that that dignity is always respected and intact. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think that that's so special to use scientific skills to serve our communities. Mm -hmm. So that's really why I want to be in the forensic science field. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, I, I do think uh, I was mentioning to Nidhi in our interview that people don't go into this field um, because they anticipate becoming independently wealthy down the road, right? That <laughs> yes. isn't how it works. So there is that passion, that dedication, but but your, um, your approach with that innate dignity, I think, really gives a voice to the victim. So I applaud you on having that um, mindset as you approach your work and particularly as you uh, move further into your career. So speaking of, if you uh, had your choice, uh, what would be your dream? dream job in the forensics field. What would you like to do? Oh, that's so interesting. Um, so of course, I would love to be a DNA analyst mm -hmm. in a crime lab. Mm -hmm. um, but having had this research opportunity at Towson University and seeing all the awesome research that's going on here, um, I also think that there's so much value in uh, researching these new techniques and these new methodologies. And I think down the line, it would be really great to pursue a PhD and mm -hmm. contribute to that research and mm -hmm. contribute to furthering the field. Mm -hmm. But in the nearer time, I would definitely love to be a DNA analyst and, and hit the ground running. Excellent, excellent. So my next question is, 
um, who inspires you, right? Uh, is there someone in your life or someone uh, uh, famous that you get your inspiration from? That's a great question. Um, I would say at this point, uh, my grandmother would be my biggest oh, inspiration. That's so nice. Um, she was a very independent wor uh, woman, just just did her thing all of the time, and um, I got to have a little bit of independence gained through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I moved across the country, I'm from Montana, moved across the country to Maryland during the pandemic, started school during the pandemic, and I didn't know anybody in the Baltimore area, oh and I just had to kind of go out on my own. and. Um, I've made wonderful friends, I've gained awesome mentors, but it was a challenge. And so I think gaining some inspiration from my grandmother and just being independent and pursuing your dreams, like even if it's a challenging time, it's really worth it. Wow, oh, that's, she sounds like an amazing she woman. She was awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> so speaking of the pandemic, how have you managed through it? So how were, you know, my son is in college, he's a junior, and so, you know, online classes and so forth, you know, but, you know, what helped you get through the pandemic? Sure. Um, so, of course, it was a very hard time for everyone. I've been really lucky in not having lost any very close loved ones, so I'm very thankful for that, um, although I do know that it's been very heavy for many, many people. And it was difficult um, navigating hybrid classes and um, minimized lab times. Mm -hmm. But um, you really gain perspective when you are taken away from the lab and, and how much it means to you. And even coming to ISHI and being around people for the first time really in quite a long time, um, you really realize how impactful and meaningful it is to be in this work and to be meeting new individuals who are pursuing similar things. So um, it was challenging with school, but it was also a really great time for learning those lessons. Absolutely, absolutely. And the one thing about this field is that um, it's very collaborative, right? And there's a lot of communication. So I was in a, a different field uh, a long time ago, and you know, it was a man's world, right? It, and now it's so great to look around the, the general session room and see the amount of young women who I know are going to do wonderful and important work uh, in their careers. And it's so empowering to see um, that, you know, the change is happening despite this very long period of, I would say, darkness, right? You know, with the uh, pandemic, right? It, it changed a lot of things for a lot of people. And so I'm hopeful for the future because of meeting folks like you and really seeing um, the potential in the room with, with the um, young scientists. So uh, my next question is around that. If you could give any advice to somebody who's considering moving into forensics uh, or even the sciences in general, what would that advice be? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, the great thing about forensic science as a whole is there's so many sub-disciplines. And when I was an undergrad, I really tried to take different classes within that. So, um, you know, even though even though I might have been interested in crime scene, I tried to get a little bit of biology and chem, and then realized, of course, I loved biology yes. <laughs> and ended up in DNA. But having the opportunity to really explore, to meet different people um, who are specialized in those different fields, it's really special to be there. Mm -hmm. And um, and then to come somewhere like this where you're with your people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it's really awesome. So I would just say explore as much as you can within, within the field and you'll find uh, what your passion is. That's great. That's terrific advice. I give my son that advice quite a bit as well. He's uh, going into business and has no idea um, which part of business he wants to study. So I told him this semester, take a variety of classes and maybe something will click with you and then it'll be clear, right? Um, yeah. it, there's a lot of decisions to be made at a young age and uh, um, don't worry about uh, you know going down a path and then having to pivot because um, I spent half my life pivoting and, and here I have this great job where I get to interview students like yourself and be in, at ISHI and, and uh, help create our booth. I mean, it's fascinating. So where you think you're gonna be when you're 20 and where you're gonna be when you're 34 40 and 50 could be very different, but still that's, that's where you're meant to be. So um, it's good. I, I love your very openness and, and the fluidity as, as you're taking um, uh, part in your coursework. So I'm going to mix things up a little bit. I'm going to ask a few questions that will help us get to, to know you a little better, okay. right? Yes. Um, so the first question I want to ask is if you could use three words to describe yourself, what would those three words be? 
Oh my goodness. That's a hard one. It is. Um, luckily, <laughs> luckily, uh, my colleagues and I did this with each other a couple months ago. And Great. so uh, I reflected on some of their descriptions of myself, and I do agree with some of them. So um, I would say professionalism mm -hmm. and dedication Excellent. and goofy. Because oh. I do like to have fun. Okay. So. <laughs> Speaking of having fun, what do you like to do when you're not working in the lab or not studying classes and things like that? What do you like to do for fun? I, uh, like I said, I'm from rural Montana, so mm -hmm. I'm a big hiker. I love the outdoors. Um, anything outside is for me. I also love theme parks, so having been here has been just the best. We've gotten to ride some roller coasters and have fun, so I just really, I just really like to be outside and, and doing something fun with my friends. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. That's great. Um, if you could have dinner with anyone, uh, dead or alive, who would that person be and why? Wow, that's a great question. I would say I would have dinner with Princess Diana. Mm. Um, I think that we uh, could have had so many more lessons to learn from her, and I think that she gave so much during her time, and um, I really... My mother also loves Princess Diana, so that's probably where it comes from. <laughs> but but um, she just she had a, a special light within her and really wanted to serve others, and I really admire that, and I hope to serve others throughout my life. So mm -hmm. I would sit down with Princess Diana. You know, you look a little bit like her. You do. Yeah, so you nice. do. No, the blonde hair, and blue eyes, are lovely. So, <laughs> Thank yeah, you. That's yeah. So nice. There is a resemblance there. So uh, my next question is. Uh, is there a quote from a movie that you really love and relate to? Oh, um, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. My mind just went blank. It's okay. It's totally okay. I'll tell you mine. Maybe okay. that'll uh, okay. spur something. So uh, I'm a huge Star Wars geek, like absolutely bonkers Star Wars. So I also really love Yoda. And in Empire Strikes Back, he says, do or do not, there is no try. And so I have trained for half marathons and, and some bike charity rides and so forth. And when I'm feeling really tired, I let that run through my brain, right? Um, because it gives me that motivation. So, uh, you know, that's just, it just reminds me that you either do it or you don't. You mm. either can or you can't, and you get you get to decide in many cases. So that's such a great example. And what's funny about that is my undergrad mentor had that as a poster in oh. our in our lab. Awesome. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I mean, that's it's really true, funny. right? Absolutely. It's so simple. It's what six, seven, eight words, whatever it is, yeah. but it's very simple, and it, it just has always resonated with me. Yeah. So um, has something come to mind? If not, we will move yeah. on to the next question. Actually, one has, and of course, it's a it's it's a classic, and I would say a lot of people will resonate with it. But just life is a box of chocolates. You never know. You never know what you're gonna get. Exactly. And I, I think that's very true. Yes. Um, I've certainly been presented with different opportunities and different um, challenges, mm -hmm. and I never knew what was coming. And especially with the pandemic, I think that we can all relate to that. We didn't mm -hmm. know what was going to happen next. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all about how you approach it and what mm -hmm. you choose to do, um, and your perspective going into those challenging times or great times. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll go with Forrest Gump for that one. Excellent. <laughs> My last question is, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Well, I've always wanted to go to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, I do love the mountains. I think it would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and chocolate. I would yeah. love it there. Yeah. So I think I'd go with Switzerland. Yeah. It makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think you made a good choice. <laughs> Thank Absolutely. you. Where would you Absolutely. live? Absolutely. Um, I am a huge fan of uh, Kauai. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an island in the Hawaiian Islands. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. They call it the Garden Island and um, living by the sea and there are mountains there to explore so you can hike and it's just a very different lifestyle than what they have here and you know what they call the mainland uh, and sure. uh, yeah so I need to win the lottery first of course um, and uh, I need to find a way to get our golden retriever over there because I don't want to put him on a plane so oh, um, but maybe if I ride. win a big enough uh, lottery maybe we could find a way so yeah um, but yeah, there's something about there that just um, it's, it brings peace to my soul. So it's That's pretty very cool. special. 
it's pretty cool. So I have so enjoyed talking with you. Thank you so much for taking the time out. The rest of the conference is going to be great. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun at Animal Kingdom tonight. So yes. thanks so much. And I look forward to seeing the great things that you're going to do uh, in your career. Thank so, you so much. Yes. I appreciate yeah. your time so yeah. much. Good luck to you. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye.